This next blend I'm working on is a continuation of experiments with uh, waste motor oil and waste vegetable oil. And uh, my focus here is, is, uh, is if I or anybody else is going to be working with making diesel fuel blends with any waste oil, then we really need to come up with a way so that waste motor oil and waste vegetable oil can be used intermittently without causing uh, uh, significant precipitation of sludge in lacquer, uh, which has destroyed six of my injector pumps. And what I've discovered is, is that if you blend uh, waste vegetable oil with waste motor oil at 50%, so they're equal parts in the solution, then add gasoline to it, uh, that forces the precipitation of lacquer in free carbon. And I believe the reason why is that vegetable oil does not have the same capacity to dissolve lacquer as uh, motor oil does. And so, whereas motor oil and vegetable oil have a, uh, have a strong affinity for each other. So, as the motor oil goes into solution with the vegetable oil, uh, the vegetable oil forces out of solution lacquer, which is in the motor oil. And so how did, uh, we have to also ask the question, how did uh, motor oil get lacquer? And I believe what happens with any oil, whether it's vegetable oil or motor oil, is that through heating an oil up to its oxidation point, lacquers are formed. Now it just so happens the vegetable oils are changed typically in a restaurant once a week, which and they go through typically only one heat cycle uh, per day, in that they're heated up in the morning and then they're turned off at night. Whereas motor oil goes through many heat cycles uh, and it's typically not changed more than any three months to a year, depending on how frequently the motor oil is changed. So what that means is, and plus, you know, we're driving our car, uh, we drive it maybe for five or 10 or 20 minutes, and then we turn it off, it cools off, and then we turn it on again, drive another five or 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and the engine heats up again. So in a single day, an engine co can go through many heat cycles, uh, many more heat cycles than uh, a fryer will in a restaurant. Consequently, motor oil ends up with a lot more lacquer in it than vegetable oil. So, uh, so that's my theory behind uh, why blending vegetable oil with motor oil produces lacquers. I've extracted about uh, three gallons or six liters of uh, sediment from the bottom of my blending tank and uh, in the last three days. And my blending tank right now has uh, basically the sludge from uh, all my blending experiments for the last three to four months, which happens to be about 20 gallons of sludge. And half of that sludge is from motor oil experiments, and the other half of the sludge is from vegetable oil experiments. So I blended it all together uh, to further my sludge experiments to see if I could force sludge to precipitate out, sludge meaning lacquer and free carbon, and end up with uh, a fuel that I can blend, a fuel blend that I can blend either with motor oil or with vegetable oil without causing further precipitation. And what I discovered was uh, my, uh, the handle on my valve or the drain valve I have on my uh, processing tank had gotten glued shut by the lacquers that precipitate out of that blend of vegetable oil and motor oil. It had gotten s glued so tight that it took two hands to, for me to force the valve open to drain sludge out. And this is a container of the sludge that I've been getting out. And the sludge is black and it's fairly thick. But what I've discovered is that uh, all I have to do is really drain about a liter or a quart of uh, sludge from the bottom of the tank bef uh, before 
the fluid starts running amber colored. And that started happening after I had drained about three gallons of sludge from the bottom of the tank. And three gallons in a 20 gallon tank means that it's basically 15% of that tank is sludge that I have to remove. But remember that this is 15% uh, uh, of sludge removal from 20 gallons of sludge, which means that I've got uh, 85%, I've reclaimed 85% of my sludge by blending all this sludge together, allowing it to settle for actually for months, and then just pouring off the clear liquid off the top into my, t or the thin liquid off the top into my tank, and then allowing that to settle for about three days. I also additionally added acetone, uh, a gallon of acetone to the whole 20 gallon tank, which is about 5%. Uh, the advantage of that is that uh, I've discovered along the way that acetone rejects lacquer. So I reasoned that if I added uh, a small amount of acetone to my blend, then it would force the lacquer to precipitate out, which apparently it has. So I'm going to draw off some sludge, and it'll probably come out a little dark, and it'll be a liter or less, and then it'll start running clear, or not clear, but uh, amber and light will transmit through it and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a fuel that will allow light to pass through it which means that the dark component is primarily lacquer and free carbon which I don't want in my fuel system and I don't think anybody else wants in their fuel system either. Alright, so now I'm going to draw off some of the bottom fluid off my blending tank and it probably will run dark uh, for a short period of time. Oh, here we go. The valve is actually a little stiff again, which means there's some more lacquer. But you can see it's coming out black. The valve handle was stiff, and now it starts running thin. I don't know if you can see that, but I can actually see light through it. And this time, uh, you know, it was probably only about 50 milliliters that I needed to draw off before it uh, came out thin. And uh, so we're getting down, I think, believe, to the bottom of the sludge uh, component in this blend. And I'm going to keep drawing uh, uh, sludge off until the valve handle starts moving smoothly because I don't want that lacquer in my fuel system. And uh, so I'm looking for a thin, a relatively thin amber liquid that uh, allows light to transmit through it, and uh, and I'm looking for my valve handle to stop sticking, which means uh, absence of lacquer. It turns out that you can blend uh, waste motor oil with uh, a waste uh, automatic transmission fluid, uh, any petroleum distillate and biodiesel without a problem. You can also blend uh, waste vegetable oil blends with uh, biodiesel, petroleum distillates, and uh, uh, waste automatic transmission fluid without a problem. It's just waste vegetable oil meets waste motor oil creates lacquer, uh, precipitates of lacquer and free carbon. We know that waste vegetable oil uh, causes lacquers and free carbon to precipitate out of waste motor oil when the two are blended together. So can we do that ahead of time and uh, extract out all that precipitate, then pump that blend into the fuel tank with maybe an exclusive waste vegetable oil blend, which is what I have in there now, or a waste motor oil blend, and, and well, that actually would probably be a problem, but let's say uh, that we could go the other way. Uh, take that blend of waste motor oil and vegetable oil and put it into a waste vegetable oil blend. And I believe we can because I've already forced that precipitate to form and I've extracted it. And what I've done is uh, it, took, uh, it took about, um, I had to drain off from my blending tank. 25% of the blend uh, in uh, dark samples uh, at the bottom of the tank. 
eventually, and by the way, those dark samples uh, at first were thick with uh, solid precipitates of, uh, of uh, free carbon. Eventually it came up thin, but it was still very black. And I kept draining uh, my samples roughly a liter or a quart every 12 hours from my settling tank. Uh, and eventually uh, I came to where the black disappeared. Oh, uh, before I got to where the black disappeared, my uh, the valve, the drain valve on my blending tank literally got glued shut with the lacquer precipitates. But after I drained off about a quarter of the tank, uh, that the valve now opens freely and the blend is no longer black. It's uh, a dark amber and light transmits through it, whereas all this quarter uh, of a tank or four gallons or um, uh, 16 liters of, uh, of sludge that I drained from the tank is black, light doesn't transmit through it, and, um, and it sticks the valve shut. So I've got a sample that's roughly a liter or a quart here, and we're going to test the viscosity of it. On my little light table, it doesn't transmit light, but if I put it in a thinner container and hold it up to a bright light, it will light will transmit through it. So we might be able to see that when we put it in the 500 milliliter uh, graduated cylinder. This stuff is still too dark to see light pass through it even in the graduated cylinder so I'm not going to bother to show you that. But I could see light passing through it as I poured it into, you know, light passing through the stream as I poured it into the graduated cylinder. Now let's measure the uh, temperature. Okay, it's 69.1 Fahrenheit or 20.5 C. So now we're going to measure the uh, specific gravity and I'm going to use the 0 0.800 to 0.85 hydrometer because I'm guessing this stuff is pretty close to the specific gravity of diesel fuel. Sure enough, it is reading 0 0.84, 0 0.847, which is uh, quite close to the specific gravity of diesel fuel. So now let's get our stopwatch and our number zero fizz cup and test the viscosity of this blend. All right, 37.6 seconds, which again is pretty close to the viscosity of diesel fuel. That means 37.6 makes it about 50% uh, gasoline uh, viscosity wise and specific gravity wise. 0.847. Says it's about 40%, so it's somewhere between 40 and 50% gasoline uh, in this blend. So that's going to be a little high on the gasoline side, and I'm okay with that. I the 35% gasoline worked uh, was remember uh, per, uh, a high performance diesel fuel. Uh, we'll see what 45% to 50% gasoline is. The blend worked great. I ran my engine on it for several hundred miles, and I also uh, transferred it, uh, the, res the remainder of it into my fuel tank which had a waste vegetable oil blend in it to see if there would be any precipitate and I drove a few hundred miles with that. And I had no trouble at all. My uh, engine ran fine. There, no indication that the injectors were coking up or that the injector pump was having problems. And I've since driven 500 miles uh, with the engine and there has been no indication that there'd be a problem. So I think we've got a solution now to blending 
uh, waste motor oil with waste vegetable oil, blending the two in equal parts, cutting uh, gasoline to thin it out, and then adding acetone at 5%. Now the reason why I did it that way is, first of all, uh, I found that uh, waste vegetable oil and waste motor oil, when blended together, forces lacquer and free carbon out of solution in the uh, waste motor oil. Secondly, the gasoline then thins out the blend, uh, that, and so it, it uh, facilitates precipitation of uh, the incompatible components in that blend. And then I found also that acetone also rejects lacquer. So I just added the acetone as a further encouragement for the, uh, for the lacquers uh, to precipitate out. And I drained all that off, and it ended up being 15% uh, of the whole blend. It turned out to be lacquer and free, and free carbon. And then once that was drained off, I filtered it down to one micron, and it ran fine.